posts. Hong Kong. Oh, are you local? Man's ad exclamation mark underwear underwear Boop. yeah if you want to see conditioning you can take a look at that video is it command or is it commands nice my family is from Zhejiang I've lived in Hong Kong before back when I was much younger Attended HKIS, 1994 to 1996. So, kindergarten and first grade, HKIS. We lived in Repulse Bay. My father worked at Central Plaza. I used to go to Ocean Park. Used to go out in the city on the buses with my mom. You graduated high school at HKS. I'm an alum. Also SAS, Shanghai American School, uh, ISKL, ISB, Beijing. 101. Yes, sir. It's cool that you graduated at HKS. or why did they move over here? Like, why did they move the family back here? That's the, what's your question? Dude, uh, that's too cool. I had some local friends too when I was a kid at HKIS. There's one, his name was Long Hei. His family was quite wealthy. Quite wealthy. I mean, because if you're a local, you're attending HKIS. <laughs> Man, you got, one, you probably got, your family's probably doing pretty well for themselves. Secondly, they probably know somebody. Because it's an international school. I know at least in the case with, uh, with Malaysia, like if you were a Malaysian national, they had some different requirements. Everyone knows that we're HKS is rich as fuck. Yeah, they are. <laughs> I've been, you know, like back when we were over there, I remember, um, one time they had the Lamborghini, like Lamborghini thing, just a tent pole event down at 101 Repulse Bay. I used to go to the welcome there and steal shit when I was a little kid. I was a terrible kid. <laughs> Awful. Just caught me in trouble left and right. Um, but why did they immigrate to the USA? My, my parents immigrated here separately. My father came in 1985. He came sponsored by the Chinese government to pursue higher education, you know, with the, the expectation that he'd be going back to China. So he went, he came over to the US, studied petroleum engineering, went to the University of Tulsa, which is where I graduated from. And uh, 1989 happened, Tiananmen Square massacre. Uh, his family, part of his extended family would, was already in the States. They, they were in Hong Kong originally and then came over to the United States. They were up in New York. So my dad already had the in to get the green card, but like, he, so he managed to get it ahead of most of the other Chinese students that came during that same wave. My mother came, my dad was, you know, by himself. He, he knew my mom, they'd met, the families knew of each other. Um, he helped her to apply for scholarship at the same university. And she came over to the United States, uh, I think a couple of years later, maybe two, three years after he did, studied chemical engineering. She has a master's of science, chemical engineering from University of Tulsa. My dad holds a PhD now. He went like straight through, um, graduated high school, 15, sat the first, second round 
of the um, college admission tests after they reopened in China following Cultural Revolution. Then got his bachelor's, then got backed by Chinese government to come to the States. And after Tiananmen Square Massacre, he was part of student protests here. He was on the news, but apparently the tape's been destroyed. Like they don't have a copy of that anymore. It's because we moved back and forth between China and the US a couple of times when I was growing up. And you know, Chinese government doesn't want to have this shit. Either the Chinese government or my parents destroyed it, concerned that they might find it, something like that. So that's, that's it. Um, they're both from Zhejiang, Zhoushan. It's an island. I was reading about Zhoushan's history. In the first Opium War, the Brits had captured Zhoushan, but then the like the admiral, whoever was in charge during negotiations, offered offered like Chinese offered Hong Kong in exchange to get Zhoushan back, and the guy took it took the deal. And was immediately demoted as soon as the higher ups figured out they they were just like you fucked up because <laughs> at the time at the time Zosan was highly developed it's always been very developed um hong kong was just like jungle island <laughs> i thought that was fucking hilarious man hong kong is a pretty shit place to live in tbh hot humid Dude, I'm in Houston, Texas right now. I've only gone back to Hong Kong since leaving it one time, which is more than I can say of Beijing. It's more than I can say of Kuala Lumpur. Hong Kong is a good place though. I've got buddies who go back there. I've got people living there too. Like people in my extended network, definitely some in Hong Kong. Just, you know how it is. Like you graduated from HKS. Your your class that you graduated with, they're fucking spread everywhere. Anyways, how old are you this year? And how the fuck did you find this channel? I, I think it's cool as shit that we both went to HKIS. That you graduated there? That's fucking cool. That means I've got somebody out there who kind of gets it. <laughs> I've been talking about this shit just like I've talked about it before. I was like talking about my people. Right, I'm saying they're not all one color. It's it's about this shared background, this experience that not a lot have. And it's it's also not just the international school crowd. I mean, it's a pretty loaded statement, I guess. This loaded term, my people. That's cool as fuck. I'm glad you stopped by. Twenty four. You just happened to stop by. Was it the guns? <laughs> That's fucking hilarious, man. That's too funny. Rip. Nobody wants to talk to Yeti either. Why? Small world, pretty crazy. Yeah, it is. I was up until 3 a.m. last night. I woke up today at 8.30. I still need to finish this video. Fuck, I need to get my video together. I got really sidetracked. But it's still early, it's 1.42. Still early, plenty of time. I'm glad you know what it is, man. I've got a Heckler on Coke USP 45 too. Full size. So I just say, yeah, I've got the, I have the counter-terrorist starter kit. Dude, back in Hong Kong, I was I was in uh, Boy not Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts back then. Tiger Scouts. My dad organized this outing to a Caltex property. We went on a boat. I still have pictures from it. I want to tell you something a little sad because my father's over here. You know, he's, he, he just left, I think, but I asked him once what his happiest memory of me was. And he said, uh, 
he said that after after he moved over to Hong Kong, he went over there first. We were living in we were living in a suburb of Houston at the time. I won't name the suburb. Only if I get another Houstonian in here. <sighs> it's irrelevant. Anyways, we were living in a suburb of Houston at the time. And my father went first. He went, he got set up in the apartment, 101 in Pulse Bay. I still know the unit on the floor. And my my mother, me, my sister, and my infant brother, he's just born. We all went together to Hong Kong with, you know, suitcases full of stuff. And my father described He described seeing me pushing the uh, the baggage cart. <laughs> and, and this in and of itself isn't emotional. What gets me is that his happiest memory, and, and you know, I, I kind of get it. I, I do get it. His happiest memory now, for now, is a, a five-year-old me. Maybe I was four. <laughs> Anyways, um, dude, I'm 29 this year. So I got five years on you. You're my brother's age. I just saw my brother yesterday. I had dinner with him and his wife out at a cafe. I think the cafe is owned by a Hawaiian guy. I like Hawaii. I like Hawaii. I like Hawaiian people. I like island people, man. Houstonians are fucking crazy. And now Mr. Malos tells me a bit about Mexicans, and I, and I'm like, okay, that's interesting. That's really interesting. Just learn about the culture. Pretty fucking nuts. Played way too much to guess not to know. Titan Tigers. Yeah. Dude, they, they tore down the old elementary school. I am, I'm in the Facebook group for HKIS alums, and I saw that announcement that they took down the old elementary school. I still have a letter. I still have this letter from one of my teachers, like back when I was in kindergarten or first grade. She was an Australian woman. And she was uh, <laughs> like, fuck. I, I understand. I understand why my parents feel the way they do. <laughs> I, I think you'd understand. Um, I don't know, I don't know what your, like your parents' background is, what your folks do, or if you're like full, full HK, but you said you're a native, you're a local, you said you're a local, I don't know about native, but my parents, man, my mom, she's, a, she's always saying, she told me so many times, like, son, we raised you to be part of the one percent. <laughs> if you had done everything I said to do, you would have been a millionaire by now. If you just were good and you listened, if you listened to your mom, <laughs> and I used to tell her, "No, mom, not yet, not yet." But at this point in my life, I like at my age now. Yeah, she's absolutely fucking right. If I just listened, I'd be a millionaire. <laughs> if I just listened, if I just fucking kept my head down, if I didn't ever just start shit, if every single job opportunity I ever had, I took seriously, there's no way in hell I wouldn't have a million. <laughs> Fuck. Not, not with my credentials, not, my, not with my background. I would probably be posted overseas. I would never have turned this on. I 
I have a Glock as well. So I've got the T starter kit. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I'm no T. I'm no T, but I know how to think like one. You got to. You gotta learn. Otherwise you get fucked. Anyways, um what else? Oh, don't fucking ask me anything. I feel like chatting a bit. I'm in one of those moods. <sighs> Unfortunately, I've never moved out of the shithole except for college and I'm kind of stuck here. You know, fucking HK is not a bad place to be stuck in, dude. One of the places I would like to go to, but I ultimately want to set up um, a satellite base in Singapore. If you've never been, you should go hop on a plane and fucking go there. Like, the food's fucking dope. Easy to get around. Everybody speaks English and Chinese. It sounds different. It sounds different, the, the, the way they speak. We live in 101. What else do we have in common? What the fuck? Have you had a birthday party at the club? And yeah, Singapore is expensive as fuck. It's a dope-ass city. Singapore is cool. I got a good friend from Macau who's now, uh, he's now like a real estate mogul up in, <laughs> mogul. No, he's just, he's got some properties. He's fixed up some properties. He's up in Omaha, Nebraska. He stopped by here um, through Houston, but misconnections, I suppose. I tried reaching out to him and he, he just like, I don't know, I guess he got busy. But right now I have new shit I can talk to him about. I should probably hit him up again. <sighs> because we've got a common interest. That's the points and miles game. That game, dude. It's a it's a hell of a game to play. That's how I'm gonna take my round the world flight business class. I'm gonna take the show on the road, but a lot of groundwork to lay first. I gotta lay mad pipe. I wanna get a one of those backpacks, just a backpack rig. Better yet, get somebody to come with me. Somebody else who's just like, let's fucking go. Ideally a female, just because it's more interesting, you know? Or maybe not even ideally a female. No, I take that back. Ideally somebody who's good with a camera, who can fucking frame shots, who knows what they're doing. Not just some random person. Not just some rando who's like, yeah, I like to travel. I have to find somebody. I can trust. What am I working on now? A video? I got a video that I'm making. Um, so, dude, had you come here like two, three weeks ago, you would have found me in a really, really down state. I was literally sitting here all day, just like this, okay? I'd sit here like this. Not even reclining. I mean like upright posture, just like this. Looking out over my backyard. Get with the camera, eh? Yeah. Get with the camera. I'm gonna shoot pornos and stuff later. It's gonna happen. I shit you not. I shit you not. I was doing this because in the points and miles game, I'd let me make a let me make, make a note right here. I'm talking about the points and miles. So in the game, I had picked up some really good cards. I was putting spend on them. And then I got a call from American Express. <sighs> Since March, I applied for my first business credit cards as a Yeti Eater. Yeti Eater is a name that I've been using for over 15 years. Like, you can do a Google search for Yeti Eater, you're going to see mad hits. Virtually all if that's me. There's some fucking clown who took my name as well on Reddit. 
he won't give it back. You know, please ask him to give it to me back nicely. <laughs> this motherfucker. But I mean, he seems like a smart guy too. He's probably somebody that I've interacted with before on forums. That was my guess. Anyhow, got a call from American Express. They wanted to put me through a financial review. In all of 2016, um, like all of 2017, excuse me, I didn't work a job. I've been living off of savings for a long time. All of 2017, what I was doing was just playing video games and broadcasting that shit here on Twitch. I was a Destiny player. I was trying to make a name for myself in the Destiny community and like fucking nobody knows me in that community. After nine months of showing up every single fucking day and every single time that Trials of Osiris, the like competitive in-game uh, PvP event opened up, I'd always be there at the time it dropped. You know, for almost nine months. I was there virtually all the time. Complete fucking waste of time, yeah? I mean, I did get something out of that time. I learned quite a lot. <laughs> but with the American Express, I've been putting my spend since I got the this one card, 0% interest for 12 months. I started putting all of my living expenses on that. And I also put some additional like major capital investments. For instance, a 2017 MacBook that I'm looking at right now, I picked up on that. These headphones, this was like my gift to myself for starting on this new project, embarking on this new journey. Uh, Bang & Olufsen H6 Gen 1, really fucking solid. The only pair of closed headphones that I was interested in because I wanted something for travel. Um, Quick check. That was like, a, I don't even know how much I paid. Close to $1,500. Quick jack, 7,000 pound lifting capacity. Some other stuff, um, just to build up some capital or some cash, get some cash on hand because it was a 0% interest card. I learned manufactured spend from my guru who's not worked a job for five years. And you know, I was playing with it. What tipped them off was one, I had a pretty high balance. I was utilizing like 80% of the credit line on this 12K card or 11K card, 11, 12K. I can't even fucking remember, it's not important. But then I put 5K of spend on the Starward Preferred Guest business card because I needed to hit the minimum sign up, uh, the minimum spend requirement to hit my sign up bonus, 30,000 Starward Preferred Guest points. That transfers to 90,000 Marriott, it's huge. Because you transfer that out, it's a really healthy chunk for miles. The goal was by the end of quarter two to have enough miles accrued to be able to take a business class round the world flight with Star Alliance. And my original route planning was to hit, go from IAH, head out to HNL, HNL over to Tokyo. There are two airports in Tokyo. Um, my cousin is out there. He's got a little daughter, a little baby girl. Um, he's been working out of Japan for some time now. And then from there over to PVG. And PVG, maybe fly around locally, use some local carriers. You know, because it's fairly cheap once you're in China to just travel in China. So like PVG, maybe hit Hong Kong, maybe, um, maybe Beijing. And then from there, I'd have to hop back out west to reach back home. So I was thinking maybe a layover in Istanbul. Like I could even go by Doha again, go see my friend in Qatar or something, you know, just get back home. Well, the American Express thing, the shutdown, like request for financial review, I filled out the required forms, but I knew my adjusted gross income was negative. And I was freaking out. I thought like, fuck, my life is over. Not my life, my flesh and blood self, but Yeti Eater is dead. I thought for sure Yeti Eater is dead. And I felt so fucking terrible. Because this, this effort has now been going strong for, for a while. I started picking up the broadcast again, doing only IRL broadcasts of my workouts from my home gym. And then I started expanding, expanding, and just trying to play with it more and break shit and go faster you know uh, right now i'm broadcasting from the iphone 8 plus 
but it's it's piping out my feed to my computer. Just custom RTMP, I have an Nginx server running on my computer. That's getting piped out through OBS, which is where you get the overlays from. Like that's the overlays are super sharp and crisp because it's just it's a browser source. You know, a lot of the shit I do is manual. I set it up this way for a reason. Because I keep track of like feedback. If you're throwing dollars at me, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna keep track of you. You know, I want like that's that's really rare on the internet. It's exceedingly rare to, for people just to like, hey, I like what you do. I like, I, I'm so happy that you're doing what you're doing. I wish to support what you do. Wow. It's kind of mind blowing. Anyways, I thought I'd have to declare Yeti Eater dead. I was thinking I need to go find the first job that makes itself available to me. And just about all this time, like, you know, I'm freaking out, I'm thinking everything around me is breaking. I was like, my fridge is dying, my car, there's air leaking out of the passenger, passenger rear tire, and just like, man, I'm gonna have to fork over so much money. I need to build up my cash. I was thinking, I need to build up my cash. I was fucking freaking out, dude. Just like, my life is over. Talking to my parents, like, they're like, you know, go finish the NBA. We'll still support you, go finish the NBA. I'm thinking, like, they might be right. Maybe that's my best bet. But part of me was also thinking, I've got so many fucking things that I want to do, so many skills. Can I possibly put everything on the back burner? No, maybe if I push after one of these business efforts hard enough, I'll have success. That's tough. That's really tough. That's one thing I know how to do. I'm not great at it, but I've wanted to get good at it for a long time. And it's making money on the internet. And I'm not talking about exchanging your time for money. I'm talking about building up residual streams. You can build up a whole bunch of small residual streams and they'll, they'll be able to take care of you. But you need, to, you need to hit the right things. This realization, I think it dawned upon me three months ago, but I just got sidetracked. I got distracted by what was going on in chat, what I was trying to do with stream. No, this, this thing took front center stage for a while. Six figures working finance, that's good. That's real good. I went out, joined my parents on a road trip. We drove from Houston to Colorado. Ultimate destination for them was to hit Arches National Park out in Utah. And, you know, we stopped over in Denver. Stop Colorado Springs, took a whole bunch of photos. And if you use exclamation mark latest, you'll get to see those photos. I'm looking for feedback on them. Your feedback, I'm gonna keep track of. I'm gonna pick out the best. I, I only wanna hear about the ones that really pop, the ones that jump off the screen and just beg to be seen. Best of the best. Like, uh, 420 photos that I took on my DSLR, I figure at least two are good enough to make postcards out of. No. Ryan, here's where I disagree with you. It's not a gamble. You can absolutely make money on the internet and there's no gamble involved. A friend of mine, back when I was pursuing my MBA, this, uh, this classmate, he operated forums for a while. He owns Halo forums. I don't know if that's still a thing, but he had like, he had a Halo 5 forum that he was building. I played Halo 5 for a while. And he had a bunch of other web interests. And he, he talked to me about arbitrage, marketing arbitrage. I was really confused. I was like, yeah, all I know about how to make money on the internet is using affiliate links to refer product sales. Right? That's That's been, it's not my bread and butter. That was my beer money for a good while. You know, one good article that I wrote yielded two, three thousand dollars worth of revenue for me across a period of years, which is not nearly enough money to thrive on. 
not, not even live on, excuse me. But okay, I know this much. This guy's you now talking about marketing arbitrage. Like, okay, this is intriguing. His recommendations to me were, okay, you set up a private network of sites, right? He's talking to me about like gray hat SEO, black hat SEO techniques. I'm listening. Okay, that's interesting, but here's the thing. I don't want to do that. I don't want to engage in black hat activities. All right, so maybe that's out of the picture. Maybe all of his advice is useless. But there's something to be said about this marketing arbitrage thing. The right piece of content you can promote and make money out of. And it's an arbitrage play. Because that's, that's literally all it is ever, right? With CPM, CPA type shit, that's, that's all you're trying to do is you buy the action for less money than you're going to get paid out upon action completion. Right? You can do that anywhere in the world. And this came up again too. Anki, he was talking about Ben. This conversation on my YouTube channel, um, exclamation mark YT will show you that. It's a Yeti here as well. But I have these conversations from the hovel. I, I keep track of everything. <laughs> I, I literally keep track of everything. But he was talking about this guy, Ben. Um, I remember somebody else in the community had referred me to Ben and was like, yeah, oh, Seth. Seth had referred me to Ben and was like, yeah, Ben is smart. He's good at making money on the internet. All right, so I talked to Ben a bit, chat with him a little bit, just through text. And ben tells me that he fucks with Facebook ads and Google AdWords. Like, that's his domains of expertise. Okay, Ben's still out there somewhere. Ben actually stopped by a couple of times after my conversation with Anki. And, and Anki was like, yeah, you know, like what Ben's doing right now? He's working for himself. He's making good money. It, it took him years of working for other people in order to do that. Okay, I don't want to work years for other people. So I, I mean, I actually like talked, said to Ben once, I was like, um, during that conversation in the midst of it, I was like, yeah, what's your rate? <laughs> and things were pretty heated. He shot back, like, he fired back, you can't afford me. <laughs> you know, I like, okay, yeah, a lot of people's consulting rates I can't afford right now. I'm going to pump my own rate as consultant too. I've got skills. I've got domain expertise. I need to leverage the fuck out of it. And here's the thing. I'm not the best at anything I do. But I do some things better than most other people. If I can leverage my skill set and build up a system, give other people opportunities to go and earn. And uh, I mean, like earn higher than what they can get in the open market, selling their time on the W2 then I have the potential to do something. Just through that. But what can Yeti Eater do? Like, what is Yeti Eater? Yeti Eater is just another name for my flesh and blood self. It's my pseudonym. It's my handle. Right? My username across so many platforms through so many years. I've said this before. I was like, Yeti Eater is a business. Yeti Eater is not a businessman. Yeti Eater is a business. Yeti Eater is just one, just one project, but it's the most public project at the moment. For now, it's the most public project. Ultimately, Yeti Eater is probably not going to be as public. Like we're going to reach this point where it's like, wow, you can see everything. Okay. Literally everything. 24 seven IP cams, bringing in feeds from across the property, that type of shit. Right. And then it will get. It will move to a different format. It will be like mobile only. And who knows? Ultimately, who the fuck knows? I think ultimately I want to move towards this thing. Like my, my ultimate vision for myself, I want to spend my time traveling, writing, and taking and sharing pictures. That's it. So I, I want to, again, just be a starving artist, but I don't want to starve. I'm sick and tired of starving, dude. So. When you popped in before this conversation, you asked, what was I working on? What am I working on now? What's the current project? The one that Yeti Eater is doing is a personal finance series, a series of YouTube videos. 
accompanied by some text. The text will be constantly updated. It will be maintained. The video is going to be like, you know, okay, here's topic one, here's topic two, here's topic three. That's it. And I can put some marketing dollars behind these videos. I can put some marketing dollars behind yetieater.com or whatever, I, whatever the fuck makes sense. I'll throw a few bucks behind it. Little tests. I'm highly confident that it will convert. I'm exceedingly confident it's going to convert. But I have a problem. Right now, my knowledge is only is strictly US based on this topic. I need to expand my horizons and learn how it works in Europe, how it works in Australia, how it works in Asia. Fucking Africa. <laughs> if I could hit Africa, oh my God. Like, that's, Africa is this, this huge, you know? How does it work in South America? Again, huge. And uh, Central South America, Latin America. I wanna be earning every single, every single major currency. Through Amazon, I can already earn euros, Australian dollars, US dollars, Hong Kong dollars, I think RMB, yen, pounds, Canadian dollars. There's more. There's more. You can hit, you can hit a lot of um, a lot of markets just using Amazon alone. Amazon's fucking great. You know, I share my Prime sign up link, but uh, you know, let me know if you want it. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not going to plug it. Most of us are already on Prime. The statistic I read just yesterday or just a few days ago was that a couple of days ago, 53% of American households have a Prime account. So it's not quite reached saturation, but I mean, it's like, it's closing in. It's definitely closing in. And Prime is actually a really good deal. It's an excellent deal. I touched my nose here, but this is because I, got, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Prime's a good deal. For one reason, especially for people like me, there's one reason why Prime is an excellent deal that you cannot possibly neglect. But we'll save that for another time. How what works in Europe? Dude, ultimately, ultimately building up the influence is just a key. The big key is teaching people about things that you already know better than most other people. Things that you're passionate about that you can clearly articulate that provide them with value. Like my content by and large, with the exception of the, the like the workout stream, plus um, the, like my taking a shower or a bath, that's, that's, you know, for a different demographic, right? I have a target audience in mind for this, <laughs> but everything else is going to be, is going to be very focused. I need to have a laser focus. I can't be spreading my time everywhere. Just, I don't have it like that. Not yet. I've already given away so much for free for folks. Like my pitch is fucking solid already. So yeah, I didn't talk, I stood around, it was polite. <laughs>